What's up guys, Justin here of Vigatech. And for quite a while now, we've already been using this Samsung Galaxy Note 20, I mean Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. You might easily mistaken this as a Galaxy Note phone since it features a squared off edges, a large display, and a built-in stylus. This looks like a proper successor to the now discontinued Galaxy Note series rather than an evolution of the S21 Ultra. Now the question is, does it have the chops to carry the torch of both phones that came before it? Let's find out! This is our Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra full review. Alright, as you can observe, the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra basically just picks up where the Note series left off, and it's entirely different from the S22 and S22 Plus, in terms of design of course. We get flat edges at the top and bottom of the device, and a new camera module design wherein it seems like there's no protrusion going on. From afar, the lenses look like they're floating on the phone's sleek matte-coated glass back. But just to be clear, there's still a bit of a camera bump so you can still expect some desk wobble when the device is placed on a flat surface. Either way, this can easily be fixed by placing a case on. Now similar to the S21 Ultra, the phone is sealed with IP68 water and dust resistance, so it can withstand up to 1.5 meters deep at a maximum of 30 minutes. Pushing it to its limits wouldn't be the best idea though. Up front, it features a 6.8-inch display that curves towards the edges of the phone, and found at the top center of the screen is a hole-punch notch for the 40-megapixel front-facing camera. Right above it in the bezel is the earpiece and secondary loudspeaker. For buttons and ports, we get some antenna bands all around, the left side is bare while located on the right are all the buttons, specifically the volume rocker and the power slash Bixby trigger. At the top, there's the secondary microphone, then down below we have the nano SIM card tray, main microphone, USB-C port, loudspeaker, and the S Pen slot with an S Pen, of course. If you can remember, the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra last year also supported an S Pen, but you had to carry and buy it separately. The one on this device can be tucked away inside the phone, so it's always there when you need it. Overall, the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra feels solid and durable. As it should, it's fortified with an armor aluminum frame and a Gorilla Glass Victus Plus rear panel. Compared to its predecessor or the new S22 and S22 Plus with their more youthful looks, the S22 Ultra looks more refined and professional. Our unit is in the phantom black colorway but it's also available in phantom white, green, and burgundy. So with this big of a phone, the device requires two hands to operate it comfortably and take note that sometimes it feels a bit hefty when you're trying to use the S Pen stylus with your other hand. More on its display, similar to the S21 Ultra, it still has the 6.8-inch Dynamic AMOLED 2X panel with Quad HD Plus resolution. The dynamic refresh rate of up to 120Hz is also here, and what's new is the upgraded Gorilla Glass Victus Plus protection. Well, Samsung doesn't disappoint when it comes to their AMOLED panels, and it has the highest peak brightness we have seen on a phone so far at 1,750 nits. It provides a vibrant and colorful display with deeper blacks, wide viewing angles, and a panel you'll never have problems viewing under direct sunlight. You'll definitely enjoy binge-watching videos on this one. If you want to save battery and increase game frame rates, the resolution can be lowered from wide quad HD+, to full HD+, or a lower HD+. As for refresh rates, we get a standard mode which is purely 60Hz, and an adaptive refresh rate that automatically adjusts from as low as 1Hz for static content up to 120Hz. On a different note, audio is one area that benefits from the phone's size, as it increases the area that it can use to give the phone a better sound overall. It does have proper stereo speakers with a sound profile that you can expect from flagship devices. Further customizations to your listening experience include Dolby Atmos for media playback, and then there's graphical equalizer, UHQ upscaler, and a sound adapter for headphones that boost specific frequencies depending on your age. When it comes to software, users will be greeted with Android 12 skin with One UI 4 on top. With this iteration of One UI, there's still a lot of similarities to One UI 3.1 but with some enhancements on theming, security, privacy, the camera app, and even on some updated widget style. There's an option to use an app drawer and you can navigate with gestures or the usual buttons if you prefer. It's a good thing that there aren't many pre-installed apps besides Google and Samsung's own apps. Additionally, there's still Samsung's AI Assistant Bixby and other useful features like digital well-being and parental controls, floating notifications, one-handed mode, and S Pen features. Speaking of the S Pen, it happens to be faster than before with a 70% speed improvement, 
and less latency from 9 milliseconds to just 2.8 milliseconds. And yes, using it feels far more like writing with a real pen and there's a neat sound that makes it sound like you're writing on paper. It lets you launch apps from the air command pop-up, use handwriting input, skillfully edit screenshots, mark up documents, and doodle with screen off memos. Other major S Pen enhancements include more accurate handwriting to text translations, and the ability to swiftly store notes in Microsoft Office documents and emails. Under the hood, just like the other variants in the S22 series, the Galaxy S22 Ultra runs on a Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 processor or Samsung's Exynos processors in other selected markets. Surprisingly, here in the Philippines, what we have is the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 paired with an Adreno 730. As for RAM and storage, you can choose between 8GB or 12GB of RAM, and either 128, 256, or 512GB of internal storage. Do note that there's no micro SD card support on these handsets, so you'll want to choose your storage capacity wisely. By the way, the unit we have has 12GB of RAM. With this configuration, performance is a beast for day-to-day -day use. The Galaxy S22 Ultra feels super smooth when swiping through the home screen, multitasking, launching and closing apps, and it delivers an immersive gameplay. It sure is more than enough. However, playing heavy games like Asphalt 9, Mobile Legends, and PUBG Mobile for long periods of time will result in some heating, even at its lowest display settings. If you're interested in the benchmark scores that we got, we'll flash them now. Moving on to security, the in-screen ultrasonic fingerprint breather is really good and unlocks the screen as soon as your thumb is placed in the right position, just as the face recognition system. Now talk about cameras, on paper, this is basically the same setup as the S21 Ultra. It sports a quad rear camera setup consisting of a 108-megapixel main, a 12-megapixel ultrawide, a 10-megapixel telephoto capable of 3 times optical zoom, and another 10-megapixel telephoto capable of 10 times optical and 100 times space zoom. Then residing in the hole punch notch is a 40 megapixel front shooter. When it comes to features, it's a pretty packed camera app. You get a bunch of options from pro to expert raw which deliver a DSLR-like experience with a suite of professional editing tools. The company is also upping the game with additional AI capabilities. There are also new night mode features which the company is calling advanced nightography. Okay. Now quality-wise, photos look sharp and it produces vibrant colors. The dynamic range is phenomenal, especially in well-lit scenarios. Same goes to the ultra-wide shots we got and it does an amazing job. Portraits on the other hand also do an impressive job in separating the subject and convincingly blurring the background. Moreover, the S22 Ultra doesn't have a dedicated macro lens, but thanks to its focus enhancer, it automatically detects super close scenarios that produce clear and crisp details, and the background separation is superb. As for that 100x zoom, it's not too clear. It's still grainy and washed, but the details are still visible. When zooming it towards the moon, the level of detail becomes so impressive that we think something else comes into play to create this particular photo. Perhaps a stock image that the phone automatically superimposes on the image you're capturing. We don't know. Anyways, when it comes to night photography, even when the night mode is turned off, we get a very good quality. It has the right sharpness, pretty good detail levels, very low noise, superb color saturation, and well-developed shadows. With the night mode turned on, it shows a big improvements in the photos' details and helps improve the exposure. Nonetheless, to get best results, you need to be standing quite still as it takes a few seconds to capture the image. For selfies, its 40 megapixel front camera provides great dynamic range. The skin color is spot on, well, the Samsung standard, and everything looks good and doesn't go overboard. Photos turned out incredibly detailed even when using the ultra wide selfie. Also, take note that when taking a group shot, the lens quickly pans in or out of its own. By the way, if you're not satisfied with the skin tone, you can also opt to choose a selfie color tone from natural or bright. As for videos, the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra supports 4K video capturing at 60 frames per second, selfie included. And just like its predecessor, you can also shoot 8K at 24 frames per second clips with the main camera. The super steady stabilization, however, is still only usable for 1080p at 60 frames per second. We noticed that Samsung added a new feature here. There's the advanced auto-framing. Basically, it automatically detects the subject you're shooting, 
determines the position of the subject, and gets up to 10 people in a shot. This is also available on the S22 and S22+. Plus. Connectivity-wise, the Galaxy S22 Ultra gets you covered with dual SIM 5G, 4G LTE, NFC, Bluetooth 5.2, and supports Wi-Fi 6E. Keeping this device running is a large 5000mAh battery which is the same as we saw in the S21 Ultra. Samsung has improved its fast charging here though and the S22 Ultra is now compatible with up to 45 watts chargers. However, as expected, you won't get a charger in the box with this phone. So you'll have to buy a 45 watt charger separately or use one if you already have. This should be fine if you already have compatible chargers lying around, but you will need to consider this as an extra cost if you don't. Additionally, there's also 15 watts wireless charging and reverse wireless charging on board. When we ran it through the PC Mark's Work 3.0 battery test under a 1440p resolution with the adaptive refresh rate turned on, we got a total of 11 hours and 31 minutes. Meanwhile, in our standard video loop test wherein we loop a 1080p video under a 1080p display at 60Hz refresh rate, 50% brightness, 0% volume, and airplane mode turned on, we got a decent 17 hours and 20 minutes. This should last you a day in a casual usage. Charging from 0 to 100% takes a little over an hour using a 45 watts charger. But generally, this will really depend on what charger you have. Okay, we're finally down to price. The Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra is priced at 68,990 pesos for the 8GB plus 128GB, 72,990 pesos for the 12GB plus 256GB, and 80,990 pesos for the 12GB plus 512GB. It doesn't cost any more than the S21 Ultra when it was released, and while it seems to be quite similar to its predecessor on paper, it has feature upgrades. It comes with a new processor that enables better low-light photography and gives more AI capabilities to the cameras, while also refining the design and offering a brighter display. Also, if you're missing the Galaxy Note, the Galaxy S22 Ultra certainly fills that gap and you get a new and improved S Pen. However, just like its predecessors, this is a very big phone that won't suit small pockets literally and figuratively. Plus, if you're not a fan of heavy phones, this is a pain in the bum. I mean in the hands. And let's address it, the lack of a charger at this price point may irritate some people, given that Samsung continues to provide a charger for some of their lower-end models. Also, memory has been downgraded compared to the S21 Ultra. And to be honest, it doesn't push things forward in a major way compared with last year's Ultra. So it's only worth upgrading if you have a phone that's at least 2 years old, or you want to start fresh on a Samsung flagship device. But what do you guys think of this Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra? Let us know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like, subscribe to our channel for more content, hit that bell icon so you don't miss any future uploads, and be sure to visit yugatech.com for the latest tech news and reviews. Once again, this is Justin, and don't forget to wash your hands and stay safe!